All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining this webinar, uh, co-hosted by the IFLA Continuing Professional Development and Workplace Learning and the uh, New Professionals uh, Special Interest Group. We're really pleased to have this really dynamic uh, program with a lot of speakers to share a snapshot of international exchange programs that you can participate or you can actually um, look into for your own professional development. And so I just wanted to share that I am Ray Pun. I'm an academic librarian in California. I'm a member of the uh, Continuing Professional Development Group as well as an ALA member and an ACRL member discussion group, which is how this um, planning started. It started last year in Malaysia when we met together during uh, one of the, the, the IFLA meeting. And we discussed what opportunities we would um, actually come up with. And that was actually quite a while ago. And now here we are with about uh, 200 registered folks and all of you here right now uh, joining us. So really excited to have all of you here um, to listen to what our speakers have to say. So just for one minute, I'd like to ask all of you to uh, type in the chat box where you are located in the world. And this is also a sound check. So if you can just type in the chat box, that'd be great. Thank you. Great, we have a lot of folks from United States, United Kingdom, Europe, going down to Germany, Croatia, UK, Belgrade, Doha. Very cool. Chile, we got folks from Mexico, Italy, Russia, Wisconsin. Quite an international audience. Right. Okay, counting down for another uh, 30 seconds or so. Please feel free to share your um, whereabouts. Well, welcome everyone, and thank you so much for attending this session. Again, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to type in the chat box. We will hold them uh, at the end for discussions, uh, and we're really pleased to invite our speakers today. So I'm going to introduce them from left to right. So we have uh, really interesting folks from all different time zones. First, we have Kate Carlisle. She began her career as a teacher and eventually transitioned to work in elementary school, academic and public libraries. Currently a curriculum resource coordinator and librarian at a small Halifax university. Next we have is Dee Wynn. Dee is actually um, a reference and subject librarian at Concordia Library in Montreal. She has volunteered in Central America and Africa and co-authored with Kate, Your Passport to International Librarianship a book published in June in 2018 by ALA Publications. Next, we have Ulrika Lang. She is a librarian from Hamburg State and University Library in Germany. She is responsible for education and training for human resources development, workplace health promotion, conflict management, and the organization of professional conferences and working visiting programs for foreign visitors. Following we have is Hella Clauser. Since 2004, she has been responsible for international cooperation within the Network of Excellence of Libra for Libraries, KNB, at the German Library Association in Berlin, Germany. Since 2006, she has been a member of the BI International to promote international program exchange. And finally, we have Flippa van der Walt, is a public librarian for the past 25 years as an area manager in the Department Library and Information Services in the city of Cape Town, South Africa. He is an active professional and has served on various councils and chaired committees in the professional association, LIASA. So again, this is a really great dynamic group and I'm going to pass it to um, our first speakers here. And please let me know when you're ready to uh, uh, move to the next slide. Thank you, Ray. Dee and I will be speaking specifically about volunteering internationally as opposed to a paid exchange or relocation. We volunteered in libraries and schools in North America, Guatemala, Zambia, Honduras, and Nicaragua. And we'd like to emphasize that we believe in international librarianship that is reciprocal, action-oriented, and focused on advancing our shared profession as best practices whenever possible. 
And I'm quoting here from an article by Melanie Seller who founded Librarians Without Borders. So in particular, we're speaking to ongoing volunteer relationships as opposed to one-time donations of books or cultural tourism. If you do choose to volunteer internationally, you may be working, as Dee and I have, with libraries in need of assistance with staffing, staff training, collection development, programming, or even buildings and infrastructure. This could include public or community libraries, schools, academic libraries, or even mobile lending libraries in isolated communities. Next slide. Dee and I will speak to these four questions about our international volunteer experiences, and we welcome your questions at the end of the session. Next slide, please. So who is a good candidate for volunteering internationally or participating in an exchange? Volunteering is a good solution for those information or list professionals who are testing the waters of international work, either at the beginning or end of their career. It could be for those who are unwilling or unable to relocate permanently, but that are seeking a short-term international experience, or for those who want to help at a particular location or with a specific problem that has occurred, for instance, if there's been a natural disaster. Volunteering internationally is advantageous in that you can set the time limit. It could be weeks, months, a year, or years that you are assisting. Next slide. So why do we volunteer internationally? This work facilitates knowledge exchange, the sharing of best practices and new innovations. When done right, it's a mutually beneficial exchange and not a have giving to a have not situation. And I'm sure most of you already know that volunteering is a good thing, but did you know that volunteering benefits the volunteer as well as the recipients of the service? And that volunteering by library and information science professionals is in itself advocacy for our profession and our value. Volunteering can reduce hypertension and increase your lifespan, and there's a fabulous psychology and aging article about that. And studies show that volunteering lowers stress, it increases your mood, as you'll see in an article entitled, Doing Good is Good for You. It can also increase your happiness due to feeling that your life has meaning. And this is laid out in the book, The Power of Meaning by Emily S. Fahani Smith. Volunteering in libraries internationally increases your worldview with travel, new experiences, new cultures, foods, new languages and connections. It can bring a heightened appreciation for your own culture as well while you're away or on your return back home. The intrinsic rewards can include pride and feelings of satisfaction. And psychology professor Todd Cashton's research has proven that travel leads to personal growth, greater empathy, creativity, and emotional agility. You're managing being uncomfortable in foreign situations, and this leads to a greater tolerance and confidence in your regular life. You're also paying it forward, inspiring others, colleagues, and friends to give back, and this can translate to more volunteering once back home. It can inspire those that you have helped to give back in their own countries. Wharton professor Adam Grant has done some research that found that those who give to others end up achieving more professional success than those who don't. And Ariana Huffington calls those people go-givers. So I urge you all to consider how you can become a go-giver. Over to you, Dee. Thank you. Next slide, please. So how can you make this happen? Let's say you've been thinking about becoming involved with international librarianship for eons, and you've finally decided that 2019 is the year you, you are going to make it happen. How do you make your dream come true? Well, I have some tips for you. You have approximately 1 million decisions to make, but the first thing you'll have to decide is the type of trip you want to participate in. There are essentially three types of trips you could take. Organize, structured, and do it yourself. Organized service trips have many advantages. You'll be a member of a team that consists of like-minded volunteers. You'll receive training before your trip and ongoing support throughout the trip. And the biggest benefit just may be that you don't have to plan a thing. You simply pay the program fee and pack your bags. The program fee covers everything, accommodation, meals, travel within the city if it's required, 
and entrance fees if the trip includes other activities. The only additional expenses you'll have are your flight and spending money. Structured service trips differ because the cost of the program fee typically includes coordinating your project work and accommodation. You'll be solely responsible for planning your transportation, meals, and all other incidentals. If you're more of an independent traveler, you may be up for a do-it-yourself service trip. This type of trip is exactly what it sounds like. You'll have to arrange everything from your placement, accommodation, transportation, and meals yourself. One major advantage of DIY trips is that they tend to be less expensive than the other types because you don't have to pay a program fee. Once you've decided on the type of trip you want to take, another thing to consider is the amount of time you have to volunteer. Are you going to do this as part of a sabbatical or will you be using vacation or unpaid leave? Can you make the case to your administration that the population you'll be serving is similar in some way, perhaps culture or language, to the population that you serve at work so that this trip could be considered professional development? Another thing to consider is how you will finance your trip. We estimate that any trip you take will cost at least $2,000. You may be able to turn to your family, friends, professional colleagues, and even strangers to help you fund your trip through GoFundMe, Indiegogo, or Kickstarter. On the last structured trip I participated in, a number of the trip participate, participants had fundraised 100% of their trip costs. Doing great work without having to break the bank is a true win-win. Next slide, please. So we hope that amazing adventures await you. What I want to discuss now is Librarians Without Borders. I'll further refer to them as LWB, their service trip in Guatemala. So LWB was founded in February 2005 by a group of socially minded librarians who wanted to address the vast information resource inequity existing between different regions of the world. Their vision is to build sustainable libraries and to support librarians. The Miguel Asturias Academy was established in 1994 and is a private, nonprofit, pre-K to 12 school in Shela, Guatemala. It currently serves approximately 300 students from varying backgrounds, indigenous, non-indigenous, poor, working, and the middle classes. So LWB has partnered with Asturias Academy to promote literacy and learning since 2009. Just a bit of brief background information about Guatemala. Books are prohibitively expensive for most people there. So people don't usually have books at home. In addition, the public libraries are rare and tend to have closed stacks, very old books, very few children's books, and non-circulating collections. So every spring, LWB sends a team of volunteers, usually 12, and a trip lead or two to Shayla to work at Asturias for uh, a week. And the work is guided by the program director, Deb Chavez, um, who is the liaison, LWB's liaison um, at, between the organization LWB and Asturias Academy. So what happens each year is that the volunteers are assigned to four teams, the programming team, cataloging, teacher training, and parent workshop team. So what happens with the programming team is that uh, the volunteers are there for a week, but there's two days called library day. And during library day, each student has um, a 60 minute session with the volunteers where the volunteers put on um, activities geared to, to the students. So um, there's usually two groups, K to four or five, so kindergarten to grade four or five, and then the older elementary uh, students. So the volunteers do read alouds, story times, put on puppet shows or plays. There's usually an arts and crafts component. Generally, they just get the children really excited about books and, and learning. So the cataloging team um, raises money before uh, we leave to go to Guatemala to purchase books in Guatemala at a publisher in Guatemala City. Um, that enables us to easily purchase books in Spanish and the local dialect, which is Quiche. The teacher training team um, works with teachers to help them um, develop strategies to integrate reading skills throughout the curriculum. 
and strategies to improve students' reading comprehension. And so far, uh, the parent workshops, there have been two parent workshops, and they focus on giving parents and caregivers strategies for developing their child's early literacy skills. And that curriculum is based on the Public Library Association's Every Child Ready to Read program, which has been translated into Spanish so that it can be implemented there. So one really good thing about this uh, Guatemala trip is that it includes a lot of activities um, to get the to get this volunteers a taste of the Guatemalan culture and, and really to immerse us in that as well. So we do a trip to Panajachel to see Lake Atitlan. The trip ends in Antigua. We have a visit to Hot Springs. We do hikes. We go to a women's textile co-op. Um, we visit residents in their homes and take tortilla making classes or weaving classes. Um, so if you're, if you're considering an international volunteer trip, I strongly, highly recommend LWB's Guatemala service trip. They have an established long-term relationship with Asturias Academy. They provide lots of pre-trip planning and support, and they include lots of local visits to local sites and they make all of the necessary arrangements for you. Next slide, please. Thank you. So if you're committed to volunteering internationally and you aren't interested in Guatemala, there's so many other places you can go. So where should you go? One of your next major decisions other than when to volunteer, how to take the time off work, how to fund your trip, and what type of library work to do, will be choosing where to go. Combined, Kate and I have participated in numerous organized, structured, and do-it-yourself volunteer service trips. Kate traveled to the Sandcastle Library in Honduras in February 2016 to volunteer for Partners in Education Rotan. This was a classic DIY trip. She made all the arrangements herself via email and was responsible for organizing accommodations. The library director mostly wanted donations and assistance with physical library organization. This trip was part of an ongoing relationship between the organization and the university. In addition to Honduras and Guatemala, Kate has also researched and visited the volunteer-led NGO Libros para Pueblos in Oaxaca, Mexico, with a colleague from Mount St. Vincent University and an endless instructor from Uppsala University in Sweden. This is a four-year project and she was asked to be the librarian team member. She was tasked with investigating best practices using a community of practice framework, visiting some of the libraries to meet the staff and participating in workshops at their annual librarian conference. The first time I visited uh, or volunteered at Asturias Academy was in 2014. That's where Kate and I met and we spent a lot of time together because we were both participants on the cataloging team. I returned in 2016 as a co-trip leader tasked with everything from recruiting, selecting, and training volunteers to providing support and ensuring that the team as a whole met our goals. Kate and I are this year's co-trip leaders, and we will actually be returning to Guatemala and Asturias Academy in, in a few short weeks. Kate and I hope that we've piqued your interest for participating in international volunteer library work. I could speak on this topic for another hour or two, but luckily for you, there are other speakers scheduled today. If you have any questions, please uh, contact us at any time. Thank you. Okay, it's my turn now, coming from Berlin, Germany. My name is Hella, and um, may I ask for the first slide? I want to talk about BI International. This is um, um, a commission of our Roof Umbrella Association BID in Germany. And what do we do? We uh, have the promotion of international dialogue and professional knowledge transfer on our screen. We support cooperation and exchange of experience on an international matter. And uh, we, of course, that uh, are our goals for BII. Uh, we want to strengthen the worldwide librarians network. 
So how do we do this and what can we offer? Next slide, please. We have three programs and we offer grants to come to Germany and um, um, experience our German uh, library scene. The first program is an individual professional visit. You have to organize everything by yourself, as we just heard. There is not an agency who does it for you. But BII is offering grants. You can apply for money to come to Germany. You always have to pay by yourself, so the grant is never uh, taking all costs. But still, it helps to um, get along in Germany. The second program is uh, you are able to get a grant to participate in an international conference which takes place in Germany. So, um, of course, an international conference is in English, so no problem with the German language. Um, and if you are an act, taking an active part in this international conference, you may apply at BII for financial support. And the third program is a group study tour um, to visit several libraries in Germany. And um, there always has to be one in the group who is organizing for the group itself. So uh, BII, we want to have one partner to be in contact with. Uh, but the grant is according to the number of participants, of course, also coming from the active library scene. Uh, in any country of the world to visit Germany and to experience German libraries. Next slide, please. So this is what we offer again, a financial support. It depends on how many days you will be in Germany. We do not uh, support travel expenses. Um, you have to organize the trip by yourself. And what you also have to do, if you get a grant from BII, you have to report about uh, your experiences in Germany. So you either write a report afterwards or um, you uh, may blog uh, on uh, the BII website. And you see it just below, BI International. We also have the information in English. So next slide, please. Yeah, so all I can say is please come, discover, get Germany on your mind. We have a very uh, nice and uh, developed library scene. We have a uh, very structured, as <laughs> uh, you can imagine, uh, a library uh, structures in Germany. And we think it's worth coming and visiting. And please check on the website or contact us on international at bibliotheksverband.de. Thank you very much. And next slide. Good evening. It's Flippy speaking from South Africa. I'm very glad to join you in this webinar. And I've been a recipient of the BII International Grant. And I would like to use this opportunity to share with you what benefits you as an individual can actually gain from an international um, exchange program. Um, next slide. The, it's been a while since I've been on, on my trip to Germany, but over the past 10 years, it actually has enriched my professional life. And looking back when um, Ulrike asked, can you please talk about your visit? There are actually four things standing out. And I hope that these four things will maybe give a guideline, um, help others to, to make a decision. Um, if you would want to go on an international trip, um, you need to go with the right attitude. You need to go with the right reasons why you would like to do this. For me, it's about collaboration learning, the culture, and then self-development. So let's unpack the four quickly. Next slide. Collaboration. 
through engaging with BII, I got an opportunity to meet new people. People that you would think that you would never meet, you will never engage with them, it's in a different country, how is this possible? But through collaboration in your own country, moving forward into Germany was an exciting and a new way of, of, of meeting new people. Um, you make friends. I visited Würzburg City Library um, and I made new friends. Um, I'm still friends with quite a few of the staff on Facebook, um, even with those who, who moved on to other cities in Germany. You, you keep on being a friend and by being a friend you start sharing ideas, you start sharing um, what would you do in this situation at work or we would like to expand this kind of program in my library what would you say about this um, so making friends is actually a very valuable benefit of this program more opportunities um, from the first visit visiting Würzburg it actually creates more opportunities because you need you meet much more people um, from the one visit it created an opportunity for me to go to Bremen to experience the city library in Bremen. Um, from there, I received another opportunity to go to the city of Cologne. Um, the city library at Würzburg then um, has moved on to the city of Cologne and she invited me to, to come and see the new and exciting things they do in Cologne. So from breaking through the ice and to go and experience an international trip to a library scene actually creates more opportunities for you. <clears throat> you build relationships. Um, if you attend conferences international, and I also attended the BID conference in Leipzig, you actually build relationships with people that share the same interest and knowledge than what you've got. Um, through collaboration, I would say I also should be best practice. You don't just go and observe and, and, and um, just learn, but you also need to go and share what you do, what you know, and how you've experienced things in your home country regarding library services. So by sharing best practices, you actually can take back a few ideas that you need to translate into your own situation in order to make it work in your country. And in speaking to what um, my previous um, presenters have said, this is very important. It's a 50-50 partnership. I can't see that any international program can provide 100% um, fund for, for the program. Um, I think it's important if you would like to go on an international um, exchange program, you need to raise funding, you need to save money. Um, you need to contribute to this program because it's part of collaboration. Next slide. Learning. Going all the way to Germany, actually a new environment. You are so used to your own environment, you only see your own concerns and your, your, your own obstacles. But when you're in a new environment and you can stand and watch from a distance, you actually can conceptualize, but wait a minute back home, we experience the same, but our approach, maybe, maybe the environment gives you more vision. Innovation. You are exposed to so much innovation when you go to the German libraries. I've been to three of them. And it's like they live on innovation. The one follows on the other. The one builds on the other. It is a constant innovation. And the reason is we need to keep our citizens engaged. We need to keep our citizens interested in library services. If you do this international exchange program, it is learning on a different level. 
there are different levels. You go in to observe. You go in to engage with particular people on particular aspects. Up front, you can draw up your list of, of interest. Um, you can forward it to, to your host. And I can tell you they really, really make a big effort to try and accommodate you in all your interests and all the levels that you would like to engage. From hands-on, sitting management meetings, going out on trips, you really learn on different levels. A practical exposure, you are part of the team, you're part of that staff complement. You are part in doing some of the services, and that is valuable. Um, be open, be willing, you might not know the language, but they surely guide you and they make it very, very easy for you. And interaction, maybe um, it's a repetition here, but you need to interact with, with your host. You need to constantly communicate. And like uh, my previous speaker has said, writing reports and articles. Before I visited Germany, I've never written an article or wrote a report. But even my hometown requested a report. And by having this opportunity, you actually get into the mode of writing, reporting, telling people, and publishing. It is a very fulfilling opportunity where you share what you've experienced in the written word because not everyone can go. Therefore, it's very important. Next slide. Culture. Now, on the lighter side, going to Germany, you can really prepare yourself for a culture boost. The people, the places, the customs, the food, the hospitality. I can really say the hospitality is of the best that I've experienced from various countries I've, I've um, visited. Um, by experiencing a different culture, again, opens your mind and allows you to think broader than just what you are used to. Um, wherever you go for an international trip and um, uh, visiting various libraries, um, do go and experience the culture. Go into the local areas and experience how the people are living so that you have a better understanding. Next slide. And then most important, your self-development. If you want to do a trip like this, you need to go with the right frame of mind. You need to take this on as part of a self-development experience. It's quite important for you to know why you're going, why you want to go, and what do you want to bring back? By having this opportunity to go to, to Germany for, 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 for a few times, you actually feel like an international librarian. And like our first two speakers who actually do the great work of going to other countries to help them, you become an international librarian where you really share broadly and, 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 and helping each other. Um, there's always new things that you learn. Take them back home. Go and see what of that you can incorporate. Don't go and copycat. It will not work. From experience, it does not work. But take portions of what you've experienced and see how can I make this work in my home country. And it's an investment. It's an investment in your own future. And on this one, I can say that since my visit to Germany, visiting three of the city libraries really helped me to achieve what I have achieved over the past 10 years. I'm always grateful for this experience I had in Germany. Last slide. Just to conclude, the most significant benefit of an international exchange program is that your career takes a higher level and a new direction. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Clippy. Now I'm going to the European program Erasmus+. Plus. It's the European Union's program to support education, training, youth and sport in Europe for the period 2014 to 2020. And its budget of 14.7 billion euros will provide opportunities to study, train and gain experience abroad. At the end of the program, more than 4 million people will have participated. And as they write in the introduction, unemployment is a risk for many adults with low skills. Technologies are changing the way in which society operates and there is a need to ensure the best use is made of them. Education and training are tools to promote common European values, foster social integration, enhance intercultural understanding and a sense of belonging to a community and to prevent violent radicalization. Erasmus Plus is also an effective instrument to promote the inclusion of people with disadvantaged backgrounds, including newly arrived migrants. Next slide, please. Oh, this is the beginning. So we can just, the, there you can see um, the link to the program. Uh, and the next one. The program supports actions, cooperation, and tools consistent with the objectives of these strategies and frameworks. Next, please. Specific issues tackled by the program include these, and the most important for us as librarians is promoting adult learning, especially for new skills and skills required by the labor market. Also promoting cooperation and mobility with the EU's partner countries. Next, please. Erasmus is open to many individuals and organizations although eligibility varies from one action to another and from one country to another. Individuals are students, staff with teaching or training opportunities, trainees and young people, and finally, youth workers. And the organizations include universities, education and training providers, think tanks, research organizations, and private businesses. The most interesting tasks for librarians are training opportunities which are available to staff working in education, both in teaching and non-teaching capacities. Training periods abroad can consist of job shadowing, observation periods, or specific training courses abroad, or to spend time teaching at an education institution abroad. These opportunities are available to both staff working in the education sector and to individuals working outside the sector invited to share their knowledge and experience. The benefits for involved organizations include an increased capacity to operate at an international level, improved management methods, access to more funding opportunities and projects, increased ability to prepare, manage and follow up projects, as well as a more attractive portfolio of opportunities for learners and staff at participating organizations. Next, please. Beside others, two key actions are most important for our field. It's the learning mobility of individuals and innovation and good practices, it is designed to develop the education, training, and youth sector through these five main activities. I will not repeat. We have these on the slides if you want to read after the webinar. Next, please. Eligible countries are divided into two groups. The program countries are the members of the European Union, plus North Macedonia, Iceland, Liechtenstein, Norway, Serbia, and Turkey. They are eligible for all actions of Erasmus+. Plus. The partner countries are located all over the world, divided in regions. Complete overview is shown on the website of Erasmus. They can only take part in some actions and are subject to specific conditions. The program guide, which you can read online or download as a PDF, will give a perfect overview about the programs and the way to apply as organizer 
or participant in 23 languages. Next, please. The staff members of universities can check the website imotionstaffmobility.eu. It's the integration and promotion of staff training courses at universities across Europe. They have a special website. Next, please. They started in 2007 with staff training weeks as newly activity in the Erasmus programs. This is a screenshot of the actual program and there are much more around Europe. Next, please. This is just an image of a staff training week I joined a couple of years ago in Cyprus. Beside indoor trainings, workshops, discussions, uh, library visits, there was also a cultural excursion and you can see we had beautiful weather and uh, it was a very nice and European wide group. Next, please. Whatever the outcome of the ongoing negotiations between the EU and the UK, Brexit is expected to lead to many changes for Erasmus+. Plus. The outcome of the negotiations is not yet known, but the EU Commission prepared a regularly updated information on their website. And as there are a lot of meetings right now, you can imagine the update is really almost daily. Next, please. The perspective. The successor program to Erasmus Plus should come into force from 2021 for seven years. The EU Commission wishes to encourage more young people through EU education funding and proposes to significantly increase the budget. Around 12 million people will be able to participate in different forms of exchange and benefit from the project funding. For citizens, it should become a matter of course to live, learn or work in a European country other than their own. Thus, the successful program should make a significant contribution to strengthening the European identity and to a democratic union. At the same time, the new program will help to give European youth greater social participation and equal opportunities. The European Commission has submitted to the European Parliament, the Council and the Member States the first draft programme for this period. We are really looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Well, thank you everyone for being on time and being really, really succinct and uh, really informative. Really appreciate all of your comments and thoughts and really the fact that you um, spent time to share experiences is really great. So now we are want to spend some time for Q&A and I know that there's been a lot of uh, questions uh, in the chat. Um, so we can um, certainly look into that. But if you have any questions right now uh, for the presenters and the presenters for each other, please feel free to speak up and uh, or type in the chat box, but I'm just going to go back for one second to the uh, Erasmus uh, slides. Somebody had wanted to see the website, so you can just catch it. So this is the uh, website, and feel free to take a picture of it, take a snapshot, look it up. Um, the slides will be sent to everyone as well, so we'll make sure you have a copy of that. Okay. So we are going back to the uh, questions and let's see what we have going on here. So there's a question, uh, I guess we could go first about the ACRL librarians and public librarians, whether they can participate. Uh, another question is about distance remote interchange without travel. Uh, does anyone want to uh, take on this question first? I can speak to um, distance without travel. Oh, great, yes, go ahead. I just wanted to mention that I have done some um, 
web-based assistance with a library in Honduras. So it just involved um, helping them with database work and some of their school librarian training and helping with um, selecting resources. So there is the opportunity in this global world to assist other libraries um, from the comfort of your own desk and to do this through these kind of Zoom meetings and Skype meetings and emails and phone calls. So um, it, it really is open to interpretation for however much you want to get involved. I don't know of any specific organizations who do that for you because I had done that myself with a library that I had already volunteered with. Great, thank you. Does anyone want to uh, talk about that? for the BII or the Rasmus program? No? Um, I can talk about the um, ACRL versus public librarians. Um, the BII program in Germany is open uh, for any type of libraries. So if you are in, interested in visiting academic libraries, um, just go ahead, look at the websites of the German libraries and see uh, which fulfill your tasks and you are interested in and contact them directly to see if they can host you for an exchange week, for example. Yes, perhaps I can add to that. Um, for the application for BII, you first, for your application, you need a confirmation from the library you want to visit that they will host you. So as Ulrike just said, you first have to contact a library, first have to find a library which suits uh, what you're looking for and what want you, you'd want to, to experience. Um, and there are, is help on the BII website as well. Then you contact them directly. If they say yes, come and uh, work with us or, or stay with us for one or two weeks or some days, um, then you get the written confirmation from this library and then you add this to the application to BII. That's how it works. Great, thank you. There is a question here from Romella. Thanks for bringing this topic. It was very useful. I'm very interested in my field librarianship and would like to ask if there are graduate programs on LIS in Germany and also any LIS graduate programs in Germany online like a PhD program. Yes, I can answer here as well. Yes, there is. It is in Berlin at one of the universities in Berlin. It's called Humboldt University. Uh, they uh, offer an LIS graduate program and also a PhD program. It's at the Humboldt University in Berlin. Great, thank you. There is another question here. Is there some program with children and young people with intellectual disabilities? Um, please check the iMotion um, website. I recommend before for university staff uh, in these program of staff exchange weeks they have a huge variety of different programs. I'm not sure if they have um, programs with children and young people right now, uh, but you can check the website regularly. Thank you, Ulrika. Uh, there is another question that came from before. I just thought I would bring it up again. Is the BII program available to African libraries, especially Nigeria? And Hella responded, the BII program is available to all active librarians around the world. You need to turn in a convincing application to BII. All visa and travel planning has to be cared about from yourself. Check the BII website for more details. I'm reading the chat because I know that when we record it and then share it, the chat actually does not come with the recording. So unfortunately, the, the links won't be shared through the chat. So um, anyway, that is a question that was brought up earlier. Uh, Hella or Ulrika, is there anything else you want to add? 
Well, as I said, um, BII is um, offering grants, so money <laughs> when you come here. It, the grant does not um, um, uh, cover travel costs, so these are always on your own, but costs while you are in Germany. And um, application is free to everybody who is actively working in the library or the library field. Um, so um, you can come and as I said, um, either on a, an individual basis or um, if you want to be part or organize a study tour and, and uh, as a group, a small group, up to 15 at the most um, as a group. Or if there is an international conference taking place in Germany, like for example this summer as an IFLA satellite meeting, there are some in Germany, one in Berlin, one close to Berlin. Uh, if you want to join there, then you can also have an application and um, for BII. So we we are really we are very happy to have these possibilities to welcome um, colleagues from abroad all over the world, and we are happy to share uh, our experiences with all of you. Thank you, Hella. I have a question for D and Kate. Uh, you mentioned uh, about uh, some of the uh, opportunities um, based on. The work you've done and I wonder based on your new book that came out last June can you just share like one or two highlights uh, maybe one from each of you um, about something that came from the book that was really new and informative that people might want to know about um, international volunteer work maybe Kate you can go first uh, did you mean something I've learned from writing the book based on my experiences yeah something that you think the, the readers might find interesting as well. Oh, okay. Um, Dee and I have included a lot of how to's and what not to do's in the book. So there are a lot of tips for um, lessons learned um, in terms of goal setting with the library that you're visiting all the way down to just in terms of what to pack and what not to pack. But it's written less as a um, uh, reference work and more as something that's easy to read so it should appeal to everyone no matter where you are where you are in the profession or whether you are a seasoned traveler or not um, so it is a uh, very comprehensive in terms of our experiences both in the libraries and just in the traveling in, in general Dee did you want to add anything yeah I guess I would just say if anyone's the least bit interested in it um, there are so many opportunities so we we talked about the ones that we did but there are many more opportunities to volunteer almost anywhere in the world so um, yeah we highly encourage uh, you to do it the rewards are endless uh, you make a wonderful difference in the lives of so many people uh, you make new friends uh, we can't recommend it enough uh, I believe you can buy the book on Amazon um, or through your local book vendor if you're a librarian. Um, I know it's available on Oasis. Thank you both. Let's see if we have any more questions here. We have one from uh, John. Another question about the book. You list online resources in the book. Do you have these categorized by countries? No, they're okay. just listed. <laughs> Can, can also one of you type the title of the uh, country? I mean, excuse me, the name of the book. Somebody is asking about that. Okay, so once I get that, I'll read it out loud. It's called Your Passport to International Librarianship. Again, that's uh, uh, D and Kate's book. It just came out last June by the ALA Publications Office. So. We have about five minutes left. I want to take the last five minutes to really um, give you all an opportunity to fill out the survey. There's a survey right here for all attendees. Please feel free to fill this out. It will help us as um, sort of the uh, webinar host to understand whether these programs are effective or not and uh, whether we could uh, continue going on uh, doing more promotions for more engagements for all of you. Again, uh, I'll give it a few minutes if you want to fill it out. In the meantime, again, I want to thank all of our speakers uh, for really giving the time to uh,
condense and really share that um, that that core information, that advice that all of us are really interested and excited to hear about. And so hopefully you'll be able to get more information about the Benefit International programs from your institutions and we will share the recordings and the slides to you as you have registered. And if you have any final questions or comments, please feel free to type in the chat box. I know it's evenings for some of you, it's early mornings for others, and it's afternoon and lunchtime. So uh, don't want to uh, take up the rest of your day and time, but yes, we will please share the link for the survey. Okay, let me type it out right now. Okay, there we go. And uh, if you can't fill it out now, you can fill it out later when you get the uh, recording and then you could see it then with the slides. Thanks everyone. Uh, have a great day and evening and we'll see you soon, hopefully. <laughs>